I guess I'm as ready as can be. Okay. Um, I'll, um, yeah, if you're ready to get started, I'll just say um, to uh, kind of introduce the, this. Um, so I was, we had a chat during the week and, uh, and then you were telling me about um, uh, some signals that you'd seen in the market and that you'd started to, uh, to purchase uh, stocks again and you were building a portfolio for your grandkids and it all sounded very exciting. And uh, it seemed like a good opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, to give that information right. out to people. So, and it was very nice of you to agree to do that. So, uh, okay, whatever you want to say, I'm sure everybody will be interested to hear. Okay, um, I can't, I can't see a chat, so I will just assume that everybody is is um, is here and watching. Um, Dave is full screen and edge reader. Now I should be, yeah, okay. I do see a uh, chat. I'm going to move this over here. Um, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. I, uh, I am loving this market. I don't know um, if the rest of you do or not, but I'm going to share um, lots of things. But I have some grandchildren running around here today too so it's going to be a little different um, for me but uh, I hope everyone enjoys this um, now based on um, my usage of edge reader um, there's so many wonderful tools that are available for your use within edge reader um i want to make sure that everybody understands how important all of this is um i started hedging and that's really what i uh called to talk to chris about was i started hedging um in uh in november and I'm going to show you why. Okay, this Hindenburg report is from um, this one has everything up through yesterday. But if you look and um, uh, Chris, I'm going to um, ask you to to comment if you're seeing the Hindenburg screen. Yeah, I can see that, Dave. Okay. Um, if you look at the Hindenburg screen here, because I, I feel that this is an extremely important thing to run, I am now running it um, daily, which I was not before. And there's a few other things that I'm running daily that I haven't necessarily done um, daily before. Um, based on what uh, I've discovered, based on what Chris has taught me. Um, the, like I said, this, this tool is awesome, and it has so many features available. It's hard to and, and uh, tap into Chris's knowledge. You're, you're going to hate me for this, Chris, but, but uh, um, you recognized one of my screens, and I'll show you it in just a second. Um, you recognize one of my screens and you said the word guppy and, um, it's something that I've been doing for, oh, 20 years, maybe. Um, but then I discovered that it's here in edge Raider too. And so I'll share that with you here in just a second. Um, and by the way, I've ordered the book to, to, uh, to get brought up to speed on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so returning to, uh, the Hindenburg Omen, uh, which is one of the, um, uh, not so secret, Chris has shared it before with us. Um, you can see back on 1117, we got a, uh, 1116, we had three of the four 
criteria for the Hindenburg. Um, and then on the 17th of November, we got a Hindi warning and a Hindi warning and a Hindi warning on the 19th. Well, that weekend, I put together um, a small hedge of 500 shares of, um, of VXX. And I'm going to show you um, the VXX. <laughs> and as soon as I flash this screen to, um, uh, oops, to Chris, he says, is that the guppy? <laughs> and I said, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's something that, um, that I, like I said, I had been using, um, for some time. So if we go back in here to, uh, this time frame. You can see that the Hindenburg Omen um, that uh, the report ran um, really showed here um, on the 16th where it began and the 19th, which is right here, is, um, is where four criteria were met. I don't think we're seeing your, the screen that you're looking at at the moment. Um, what screen are you looking at? We're, we're just looking at the, the Hindenburg report still with the chart of NVIDIA. Okay. Well, I have activated uh, something that was below it. Let me, um, let me make sure that this screen is, is the one that's showing. Uh, yeah, it should be it. Yeah, we're still seeing the the edge rate screen. Oh, now it's changed. Okay, changed just now. Okay, so if I drag something else into the screen, um, then uh, then I have to make sure that it's being shared. Okay, yeah. so you can see here that on um, eleven sixteen. That's where the Hindenburg uh, flashed a warning of three, and then on the seventeenth and the eighteenth and the nineteenth, it had four, and those were all Hindenburg omens. I put on on the twenty second, which is this date right here, five hundred shares of um, of VXX. Uh, shares of stock. Now I'm I'm going to kind of steer away from uh, puts at this point, um, only because um, I don't know. Uh, oh, I want to go here to portfolios and do this one. Okay. Can you see this screen at this this time? Or are you still looking at that yep. graph? Yeah, we can see the um, vector based screen. Does it have uh, portfolios on it? Yes. Okay. This is a portfolio that um, that I run all the time, and I don't I don't change the positions. Um, and there's several reasons why. If you look at it, you can see that all the buys on in this per particular portfolio. We're done on the 25th of 2000, uh, March uh, of 2020. And this is right after the pandemic crash. So you can see all the gains that I have. But my, uh, my dividends for them are based on my buy price. And you can see my cost per share on GAB is $4.30. Um, which put my uh, uh, 72 cent uh, per share dividend um, up around 12, 12 and a half percent. Um, and this um, uh, GAB is a very, very stable. Uh, I mean, it, it goes up and down between, let's call it uh, $4 and $7. But for me, I, I, I don't care. But I took, 
I took the time to put this portfolio together solely based on dividends. So I knew that I was going to have to hedge. And you can see that um, I had worked my position of VXX up to 4,500 shares. Now, I have not adjusted that uh, because I've already taken all 45 of those off, 4,500 shares of that off. And um, that was at um, uh, about 2680 average price. Um, and at 26 average, uh, 2680 average price, it's over 31,000 bucks, I believe. Um, so you can see just since um, uh, a couple of days ago, um, it's dropped six or seven thousand dollars. Now I'll go ahead and take it off uh, of this portfolio tracker um, and update it correctly. But um, um, you can see that my portfolio, if you look up here, my total portfolio after I added last year's dividends was 672 and it's down to uh, 648 um, as of right now. Uh, and that's even with a $31,000 um, uh, adjustment for the for the VIX. So this portfolio uh, still lost, um, uh, I don't know, 5% or something. So in order to hedge your portfolio, uh, and some of you may or may not have um, a lot of money to hedge, but remember that um, you need to keep somewhere between um, uh, five and 10% of your portfolio available to hedge with. Now I'm gonna show you some other uh, wonderful things. Let's see, are we back to the Hen Hindenburg Omen screen? Uh, yes, yes, back there. Yep. Okay, good. Well, I think I think I'll have it pretty well uh, figured out by the time I've finished <laughs> with this. So, if you look at the Hindenburg Omen, um, the um, again we went to, and this this Hindenburg Omen will also tell you where you can go um, to add uh, more hedging positions. If you're paying attention back here in uh, in November, you can see that we had lots of warnings. And then um, in December, we had a uh, full-blown uh, uh, Hindi. And then um, again, January 6th, uh, it hit again. And so that's when I had my position built to that, but I had also bought um, some um, 4,500, uh, 4,520 um, S&P um, puts, okay? And I'm gonna move something else into the screen now. Can you see this uh, this screen of the S&P yes. 500? Yeah, we see that. Okay. So this is uh, uh, January the 5th, and I put a horizontal line through it when I bought the uh, uh, 4,500 puts. Now, I got to be honest with you. What I did was I put on a 4,520, um, uh, 4,500. Um, put spread and then I took off the um, uh, I took off the 4500 so I own the uh, 4520s and that um, I, I just I took off when I got to this point here which was Monday okay that was uh, January the 24th now I think I have a picture of that okay so here's where i put on um the initial piece of it and my actual cost was um under thirty dollars 
Um, and when it went up here and failed, I thought, eh, well, that's when I took off the, um, um, the hedge for it. So I had bought or, or, or actually sold a put spread of uh, 4520, uh, 4500. Because um, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to tie up 35, 40 grand in a, in a, in a put spread. But when I saw that it was a real deal, that's when I decided it was time to, uh, to really put on a hedge. And then I took it off here. This is uh, the 24th of January. Uh, yes. Okay. And so this, let's see if that's behind it. Uh, it's the S&P 500. That's, yeah, the 4520. That's this one here. I'll make this bigger. Okay, so this is what, this is what <clears throat> that hedge looked like on Monday the 24th. I still had uh, six of them left. Okay. And they were trading at, um, well, on the 24th, they were trading much, much higher than that. Uh, I can show you. Uh, they were actually, they were actually up around here. Um, we were at 42.22 was the bottom of the S&P, which just happened to be just inside the two sigma bands or the two uh, standard deviation bands. Okay. That in itself is a huge move and that will always trigger uh, some of the fancy guys that have um, uh, uh, machine language uh, trading uh, plugged in. So um, when it hit that, when it hit that uh, second standard deviation below the mean, um, and remember, we were up here at 4,700. So it had dropped 500 points on the S&P in just that short period of time. Um, so if you take, if you take uh, 4,222, about right there, it was $150,000 that put was worth. Um, I didn't get that out of it. I, I started closing it out when it was, when it was down here because I could, I could see what the heck was going on. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I want to, um, I want to come back to, uh, the Hindenburg and I also want to cover, um, this little tool right here. This is, um, let's see. Is this the one I want? Now this is 1230. Um, okay, this is the closing date. Now, <clears throat> what I did was um, I, I ran uh, this report, so I pulled it back up and I actually have it on another screen uh, that you guys can't see. I've got, I've got four screens running, so, and they're, they're out of order from my normal. Um, and I was hoping to have some time to um, to queue up another camera so that uh, you guys could actually see the screens the way I look at them. Um, because it's really, really kind of cool to know that um, this um, report shows the 19th and what NVIDIA was doing. And it was, it was showing hold long. This is the VXX trend following strategy signals. Um, Chris, you and I haven't talked about this before, but um, you can see that on the 19th of um, November, when we had a Hindenburg Omen, we still had a lot of hold long um, uh, 
signals. But if you blast over here to 1122, uh, NVIDIA is still a hold long. Um, but you can start to see that there's more and more um, short signals um, coming into the market. Um, and this was done on the 22nd of, um, of uh, November. So I know that um, the market's in trouble uh, just based on the Hindenburg, based on the VXX trend. And if I can show my, my other guppy screen and I'll show, uh, okay, this is, uh, this one is of um, a bunch of closed end farms. Let's see if I can share a different, uh, I'm gonna drop that one out. And I'm gonna try and bring this one up. Okay, this is the VXX screen. So you can see, um, and, and I encourage you to, uh, like I said, I've used this for many, many, many years. And so it's no, no big secret, it's out there in the real world. I didn't know where it came from or didn't remember it. But I can tell you that um, I am familiar, familiar with uh, uh, Jerry Apel, Gerald Apel, and George Lane. And they were the two developers of MACD for Jerry Apel and Stochastics for George Lane. And in, in a uh, uh, private conversation with I had, I had with the two of them back in the early 80s, um, they, uh, they both admitted they wouldn't trade one without the other. MACD, uh, Jerry wouldn't trade the MACD without uh, George's stochastics. And um, so you can see that we had a crossover on stochastics because it's faster back on the 4th and 5th of November. And MACD was, uh, was given it a whirl here. Um, and they both confirmed one another um, on the 8th of November. And then if I were to put price into this equation, because all this is, is moving ex exponential moving averages of what's going on with price. So you can see right here that the market, uh, this particular case, VXX, is struggling. And if I put the S&P on here, and I'm just going to put the spiders. Okay. I want you guys to note. Oh, I forgot I had all these notes on here. I want you guys to, to notice that um, I had stated in my own notes that the up was over in early November. And we had a retest failure. And I didn't realize at the time that we were setting up the left shoulder. And <clears throat> if you look at how the S&P came down, this is a multi-day, multi-week, 50 uh, retracement of the Fibonacci's and that um, I've, I've never really talked about it in my trading, but it was extremely important for me when I was trading uh, commodities and futures and particularly the um, S&P 500 um, uh, in, in the 1980s, mid 80s and 90s um, when I was trading them on a daily basis. Well, I, because of my experience in the uh, S&Ps, I know that the third time up, um, uh, if it fails at the third time up, we're going to go back and test the, uh, the midday, uh, uh, the multi-day and the multi-week 50 Fibonacci. So I knew that that was coming. Um, it didn't happen this time. Um, but this did put in a higher low and further develop the left shoulder of, uh, of a head and shoulders top situation. 
Now, this is back um, just before Christmas. This is December 20th. We put in a higher low. And usually what that'll mean is if a Fibonacci retracement is less than 25% of the full run, and I'm talking about from, from this point back in October to this point, um, if it's less than 25% retracement, then we're going to go higher. And that's what I put in here. Um, so is it going to retest the high or is it going to go higher? And it did go up and retest and failed again. And it tried one more time. And that was on January the 4th. And that's when everybody finally gave up and threw in the towel. And we have this giant bearish bar here. But look at the exponential moving averages of the price. They're just price is just getting slaughtered. So the next day, I upped my ante on my uh, on my uh, puts, and um, this is where this is where having this market knowledge uh, from years and years and years of of talking to people and learning, um, and the experience that I developed because I. I was fortunate enough to, to um, my first broker was um, Luca Camel, and he was at uh, uh, Sherrison Lehman in the early 70s, and he's the one that taught me how to read price action, um, and the only thing we had at the time was a tape, so we had to look at a run of uh, prices and decipher what was going on. And um, thank God for, for VisiCalc um, in 1979, because VisiCalc was what was available to me on my TRS-80. <laughs> so I could build a spreadsheet, which is what Excel is today. Anyway, on the 5th of uh, January, we got this bearish, uh, very bearish candle. We got the crossover with all the, the short-term EMAs. And um, uh, we came down here once again to this 20, 25% retracement. Uh, and that was close enough for my money uh, to get us uh, a little bit of a rally, but it wasn't enough to convince the market. And what these, what these blue lines are is what I called uh, for years, the Blue River or the river running to the ocean, which is where all the, the big uh, investors, the uh, uh, institutional investors are. This is where they hang out. And that's, you know, in the, in the 30 to 50 um, uh, moving average range, uh, some dro uh, drop to 60. But all of us short term traders, we're always residing in, from the commodity days, the nine and 21 crossover. Um, and uh, where this was derived, um, uh, it was derived from uh, the three, the five, the eight, the 13, and the 21 EMAs, which are all Funny, funny, I should bring up Fibonacci's. Those are all Fibonacci numbers. Um, it isn't until you get into the institutional investors, which is the Blue River, um, that um, uh, it smooths things out, but it tells you where they are too. Now, here's what I see. We came up, we came back up off of this retracement and my Fibonacci's teach me, have taught me that if we do a shallow retracement off of a big move, then we're going to go higher. But I also know that we have to get through this left shoulder over here on this side. Okay. And there's been a lot of resistance building there. So it went up there and once again, it failed and we got another, um, uh, an, another bearish bar. And this time, 
all the little guys, all us traders are heading into the river and the river hasn't budged. You can see that they're just moving straight across. But um, coming out the other side, once we cross that river, um, it's, uh, it's Katie bar the door. We're running south. And it did. Now, <clears throat> one of the other things, I'm going to see if I can activate my, uh, my trade station screen, which is this one here. Okay, do you guys see this trade station screen? Yep, see that. Okay, let me move it over here to my SPOO's radar. Now, <clears throat> if any of you are, are uh, older than 50, you might know about the SPOO's. But unless you traded the SPOO's, uh, 1985, I believe it was, SPUZ was introduced as the first um, futures contract for the S&P 500. And um, uh, so it was dubbed SPOOS from that point on. And this is my SPOOS screen. I had to reconstruct it after, uh, after it got destroyed by uh, uh, Trade Station. All these software changes that they made, they, they blew up most of my uh, pre-built screens. But you can see that I look <clears throat> at the VIX, the tick, um, the ES. And uh, because I don't have a futures account tied to, um, to uh, these accounts, my futures are elsewhere. Um, I, uh, I, I only get delayed data, but I do, all the rest of these are all, um, live data. <clears throat> this is at advanced, the advanced line, and this is an uh, advanced decline difference line. Okay. And, uh, what that is, is it tells me, um, what direction the market's going. Um, in terms of what's what's buying and what's selling. Now, I'll see if I can find, uh, there we go. This goes back to, um, what day is this? This is um, January 28th. So um, you can see that even on January the 28th, um, That would have been Saturday, right? Hmm. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is the twenty. No, this is the thirtieth. Okay, so that was that was Friday. Friday. Twenty uh, eighth yeah. was Friday. Okay, you can see when we opened up here. Let me go to Friday. Do 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 do, because it's a one minute chart. You can actually see when the market started to take off. Okay, and there's the market opening right in here. There's 8.50 and uh, so 8.30, that's my time. It's selling off, okay? So as an old S&P tr trader, that's one of the things that I used to watch, but you can see <clears throat> as the clock is ticking, um, the advanced decline difference starts to rise. And that means that the advances are outpacing the, uh, the decliners. And um, the one thing that's really interesting about this, and I'll go back to that other chart in a minute, is I can do the same thing here with the ticks. And I'm gonna run this back to, Let's see if I can, if I have the data for, uh, okay, here's the 24th. This is Monday, the 24th. <clears throat> the market opened, if you can read that data, at the low, the low ticks of 1833. Okay. Now we consider, um, 
when I say we, I'm talking about uh, uh, traders, um, old old traders. Uh, consider uh, plus thousand, and uh, let me plug this one in here and minus a thousand. The places to now that's actually uh, 543. Let's take this up here to there's a thousand. That's close enough. Okay, that the market will trade <clears throat> generally between plus and a minus of um, a thousand. Okay, and when you see a divergence like this, that means we're going to have a run back towards the top. And you can see through all of this days and days and days of it. Okay, we had another, we opened lower. This one opened at minus 1790. Okay, and what that means is there's 1790 prices that were lower um, than the bid price, than the ask prices. And you can see that um, as we go through this whole week, it's starting to build. Um, we're not going quite as low. This is the sell-off that we had. Um, by the way, I'll, I'll give you a little, uh, a little here. This one uh, was a low of 1565. <clears throat> um, if you look at this timestamp, this is 230. There will be every day uh, between two and three o'clock um, a, uh, a trend change. So if we have a downtrend um, at say two o'clock, you, uh, you can darn sure bet that the shorts are gonna come out at 2.30 um, to 245, okay? Now here we are on the 27th, and I think this is the day that um, that uh, Chris and I had our conversation. Was it was it Thursday, uh, Chris? Um, Wednesday or Thursday? It was the day before I sent the email, so I think it may have been Wednesday. Okay, so that would have been this day here. Okay, and what was our low there? That was seventeen hundred. That was fifteen hundred. You can see they're getting softer. Okay. Um, but we opened much higher on the 27th and look, we're barely breaking a thousand on, um, uh, on th Thursday. Okay. And this, there we go. We did break it. It went down to under 1200, but it just, uh, it comes right back again. Now, all of this is, uh, fine and dandy. <clears throat> what? How does that affect you as a trader? <clears throat> for your portfolio, well, here we go again. For your portfolio, <clears throat> you need to know all of these things because when you're looking, are you looking at an S&P chart here? Yes. Okay. Uh, now it's looking at the uh, I INDU. Uh, no, this should be spx.x oh yeah sorry yeah, yeah. it's spx.x i was looking at somewhere else okay this is what i this is what i pay attention to uh, i annotate this nearly every day um and you can see that we're still underneath the 200 day moving average um but it's also this is a squeeze and uh It's a squeeze, it's a squeeze lower, okay? And um, I know that after about six to eight days, sometimes nine, um, the direction of the market is gonna run out of steam. And you can see that as it's bared out in here, okay? This is nothing more than uh, a momentum gauge um during the advancement and normally one two three four five six seven eight nine ten days ten days into this advance 
it started to run out of gas. But it gave it one last gasp before it rolled over. Okay. And combining that with um, my indicator, which is nothing more than MACD, stochastics, rate of change, RSI, yada, yada, yada. It's, a, it's all of them built into one. I can, I can read this after so many years as saying, okay, we got some divergence here at these two tops. And it'd be no different than reading uh, MACD and stochastics. They'll show the same thing um, that we're going to go back down. But we don't get a severe downturn anywhere in here until we get to here. Okay. And, and if you look at what's going on in here, <clears throat> what we have inside this, and that's why Chris's software is so important, because it does all the mathematical calculations and, and says, yes, you're in a squeeze, or no, you're not in a squeeze. And right here, no, you're not in a squeeze. No, you're not in a squeeze. Yes, you are in a squeeze. Yes, you are in a squeeze. Okay. Um, Chris's software will tell you daily, weekly, monthly, when the squeeze happens. And <clears throat> one of the things that Luca Camel taught me um, uh, in the early 80s, when we finally had computers um, that would show charting, and we had big six-foot satellite dishes outside our window, um, so we could get uh, data uh, from the company that was before eSignal. Um, uh, we, we developed, he developed and taught me that any time uh, the uh, Keltner channels are violated, that's when, <clears throat> that's when you, you create big moves. So a one and a half um, uh, ATR off of a 20 moving average. Uh, and you'll notice that, that I use uh, yellow is my 20 and red is my eight. So everything I've ever done has been the 921 or the 8 and 20. Um, as, uh, as I grew up, I wanted to get faster than everybody else, but everybody else has since adopted it too. And I used to tease George, and many of you knew George, uh, that I wanted to get in the market before him. <laughs> but anyway, um, I love George and I miss him. Um, in any case, you can see, um, we we came came down through the Keltner channel, and this blue line is now we've added the Bollinger Band to this. And when the Bollinger Band goes inside the Keltner channel, that's when we develop a squeeze. And what that generally does is it it uh, it makes the market pop one way or the other, and that's all this indicator is down here. It it tells me what's going on with these bands so I can look at them from afar. Um, and here's my, uh, I'm gonna drag this into it. And uh, Chris, you tell me if this shows up, I'm going down, oop, nope, it won't let me come out of that screen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, that was a 30, a 30 minute shot of the IWM and that started um, at what time did that start? That started at 1330, which is uh, 1 30 on Friday afternoon. The small caps finally came to life, but it was because of, um, let's see if I can do this here. I'm gonna do, that was 30 minutes, so I'll do this one here. And, and remember this too, that your ES will always lead the market. So uh, what time did that happen? There's your 9.30, it's leading the market. And then here we go. This is uh, two o'clock. The, uh, the E-mini started leading the market higher. 
and that was on Friday afternoon. Now let's look at IWM. Dave, Dave uh, quick question. Yes. Are your times central time? What yes. time? Yeah. Central time, sorry. Okay, so there's the IWM chart that I was looking at on the other screen. Okay. But you can see that we've been in this downtrend. There was a huge, a huge squeeze back here. Okay. And then I, I screen a, a huge um, reversal uh, coming off of this double low retest failure. And once again, it popped it and it popped uh, the IWM, which is the Russell. And that, um, that is a good sign. But I will tell you that in my experience, the, um, the market's in deep bandini right now. So tread lightly wherever you go and make sure that you develop um, your, um, your hedging strategies. Now, I'm going to show you... Um, this was the VXX trend following strategy from 1122. And I think I have one. Uh, there we go. From 130. Come on. Oh, I know what I did. I moved it off. Um, I spread these things out all over my all over my four screens because I got four acres of property here. Yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's the guppy moving average. And if I click on this and I do this correctly, here's mm -hmm. NVIDIA. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you for, for using the name, uh, Chris because I didn't realize that you had it built into the software and it saves me a, saves me a double entry work because it's mm -hmm. already here. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to do a control find and I'm going to do uh, here's Netflix. Has Netflix, Netflix been in trouble since earnings? <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Right. Let's look at uh, IWM and see if that one's in that, in that, in this list. Yes, it is. Okay. Now I'm really hoping that uh, that uh, I'm not wrong in my in my statement here that the market is in real trouble because I'd love to see us get a nice bounce, get everybody uh, back to hunky dory, but <clears throat> the problems that we have with inflation and uh, uh, the uh, the Fed raising interest rates um, so many times. I don't know if uh, Jerome, Jerry Grant, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Grantham. Um, Powell uh, will be able to tread lightly uh, in this market or not with interest rates. Um, if he gets aggressive, as uh, as many anticipate, uh, he could throw us in a recession, and so that's why it's it's very very important to uh, continue to look for ways to hedge your portfolio. Now, um, uh, seasonally, this is one of the best times of the year, <clears throat> beginning October. Uh, 25th um then we have our christmas rally and now uh, we should have a rally here in the first of the year but as january goes so goes the market for the year and um uh, the real estate market has topped out but rents are still skyrocketing um medical costs um Food prices. I read a report the other day from the UN. Um, uh, food pricing is just devastating the rest of the, the planet. Um, the rest of the world just 
does not know how to handle um, uh, the increase in inflation in food. But that's exacerbated by, um, uh, you know, the pandemic has slowed everything down, including deliveries. Um, it's uh, the crops are devastated by climate change and drought. So think about those things, too. Um, now, uh, this is what I would normally do <clears throat> when I'm looking for places to go and things to do. Okay. <clears throat> I would start with, uh, as many of you already know, I would start with this. Okay. And I'm not going to filter out any, um, uh, any days, but I want you to look down here at uh, some of these uh, some of these charts. Um, now this this chart is um, mine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one. Doo, 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 doo. This is one of my one of my favorite charts, um, and so is this one. But I'm going to put this one up. Is this the one? Nope. This one. Yep. I've got so many favorite charts. Uh, let me see if I can, yeah, that'll do it. Okay, this one has just got um, the moving averages on it. Now I'm gonna, uh, here's a good proxy for marijuana stocks. And then uh, of course, here's uh, some more. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna skip down here to, how about Snap? There's a lot of um, there's a lot of these meme stocks and uh, Zoom. Zoom is one of them. This is a pandemic and meme stock. Um, there's a lift. So your, chart, uh, your chart is uh, the last bar is November, so you might want to just scroll that oh, thank forward you. a little bit. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I start bouncing around here and and. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of symbols that I frankly don't have any interest in, but there are some like Moderna that I am interested in. Um, and uh, if I go over here and I'm doing a uh, off screen, I'm doing a uh, a search for PFE. I think Pfizer is going to come uh, come through this thing pretty well. Um, and there's some other stocks like Pepsi. Um, look how strong uh, Pepsi held up mm -hmm. uh, through this uh, through this downturn, yeah. and it's uh, it's in my portfolios too. Um, Halliburton is another one. Um, all of my uh, all of my oil stocks have held up very well. And let's take a look at at this one XLE. Okay. XLE uh, actually uh, benefited during the last uh, the last few days. Now I'm not sure how Oprah did. I haven't looked at her chart. Nope, she didn't hold up very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this is Weight Watchers for those of you who didn't uh, pick up on that. And then this is Lowe's. And uh, when I look at Lowe's, I always like to look at Home Depot. Okay, and um, the other one is uh, BLDR. I think that's the one. Nope, it's not in there. Um, okay, let's talk about foreign stocks for just a minute. Uh, Brazil is seem, seems to be doing okay. Um, one of the ones that uh, I'm tending to favor. Uh, oops. Let me do this again. I did it wrong. IFN. Let's see, no, it's not in there either. Uh, India, um, and here's uh, here's Japan. Japan probably will not do well if we uh, if we slip into recession. Um, but I look for uh, Southeast Asia, particularly Vietnam, and uh, and India to uh, to play well uh, over the next couple of years. 
huh. the retailers, um, I, I don't think I've got a prayer. <laughs> um, the only thing that's going to help them out really is um, uh, is if the market continues to go higher and develop more spendable money for everybody. If not, then retail is going to uh, going to really collapse, and I think that will uh, put the death knell in uh, in malls because uh, they're already really really struggling. Um, now, surprisingly. Um, gold has not done well at all. So if you're looking for, um, uh, for gold to help you out, um, I wouldn't count on it. And, uh, here's Cody. Um, that's your wife's makeup. Don't, don't look for any help there because that's once again, it's spendable money. And the, uh, you can see when the party was over here for Twitter too. Um, that's back in October. Now, let me go, let me go over here a little bit more. You can see it, it, it had already, it had already topped after its earnings in July and, uh, and fell apart. So, um, what about Apple? You say, let's yeah. look at, let's look at Apple. Had a good day on Friday. I think, uh, it did. And yeah, no. scroll forward to the end of the chart. Yep. Are you missing missing a day or no? Uh, nope, that's it. That is that's the last. That's the Thursday bar. Uh, One twenty-seven. Well, give me uh, give me a minute. Yeah, I think you may not have updated on. There you go. Oh, you know what? <laughs> um, I did, but I went backwards because I didn't have. Uh, I didn't have. Uh, the okay. options data. Okay. So this. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. So, anyway, I'll uh, I'll go back to reports view here. Um, Apple, we're looking for a four percent move in Apple, uh, and it's it's currently um, what one hundred and sixty? Yeah, one hundred and sixty dollars, and we're looking for uh, you know a fifty-two point move. Uh, let's see what expected uh, expected move is. Um, they're only expecting a thirteen percent, twenty one percent in the next thirty days. Um, let me change this to uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. I unhook them from um, from the template so that I can I can put my own. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my own uh, charts on here, yeah. And sometimes it's sometimes it's guppy, and sometimes it's not. But uh, let's go down here with a cone, okay. And this one's this one's kind of kind of good too because it breaks out my moving averages, shows me the squeeze, um, and yet I can still pick up uh, I can still pick up the charts and the cone. And there's your apple. Yep. Okay. Oh yeah. So you got the last bar there. What's the date on the date now on the last bar? Uh, date is on the last bar is of Apple. Is that still uh, Thursday? That's still uh, one twenty five. One twenty five. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not. Uh, it hasn't yeah. popped up the report yet. Yeah. So let's go to. Yeah, it's still working on it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I should have done this, but when I uh, when I was running my reports for Friday, mm -hmm. I hadn't I mean, I haven't been back in here since then because I've had uh, I've had more fun with my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? For, are you ready for this? Uh, I have a 45 year old son that uh, lives in San Diego, and uh, he's uh, got a baseball tournament today. Uh, or yesterday in Fallbrook uh, with his 13-year-old. And um, uh, today in Carmel Mountain, and they're about 30 miles apart in San Diego County. And, um, and he was wincing and whining about having to, you know, run between um, <laughs> yeah. uh, the two 
the, the two tournaments. Well, I just got a, a text message from my daughter this morning that said, um, uh, could I help chaperone? There's 127. Let's go to, um, I'm going to go to the last report, which will be seasonal crossing. That's 130. Yeah, and if you just select Apple again, it should the chart will the chart should just show you that however much data you have downloaded. So the chart should be up to date now. If you scroll to the very end, I would imagine. There you go. There That's it is. Friday. Nice yeah. little pop. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'll tell you how much I paid attention to Apple. Um, and you and, and you I had should. a position in Apple too. Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, in fact, that takes me to, uh, let me show you, let's see if I can pop this in here just for a second. Um, let's go to the grandkids. This is the one that I bought the other day. Can you see this portfolio? Yes. Okay. So this is what I bought for my grandkids. I spent, I spent a hundred thousand bucks and it's up 3.28%. And that was since uh, since I bought it on Tuesday. Okay, remember we got that eighteen hundred minus ticks on Tuesday, and then this is the last updated price, so it's up three point two percent. And um, uh, if you want, you can see that these are all the things that um, that I got for them. There's AT and T and Altria. Now, I don't expect them to smoke, but the things that they recognize <laughs> are, um, are <laughs> um, Phillips 66. I'm a big fan of Phillips 66, uh, and I've gotten a split, uh, split and a spinoff on it. On it. Uh, Chevron, International Paper. You know, I ask them, uh, 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 kids, what kind, of, what kind of paper do you use at school? Oh, we use lots of paper, Grandpa. Okay. Um, and they call me Papa. Um, Clorox, um, you know, good old staple. J.P. Morgan, because um, they all have accounts at Chase. Procter & Gamble, because they brush their teeth with Crest. <laughs> um, they love McDonald's. They like to travel. There's ConocoPhillips, and ConocoPhillips actually spun off uh, a piece of that. Then there's Nike. Nike hasn't done very well um, uh, for a while. Uh, the party could be over there for, for some time. But there's our Apple. And look at this. We've made 7% on it in three days. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, um, uh, uh, CalMaine Foods, Disney, Facebook, and Google. So all of those are names that they're familiar with. They drive by them every day. And I promise you, if in and out was there, uh, if they had a, <laughs> a stock, um, they'd like that one. Now, they're not a big fan of, of Taco Bell, which would be yum. But uh, these are all things that they recognize, and they'll get their reports uh, mailed to their house, and they're excited about it. And they're, uh, they're, they're 5, uh, 11, 13, 14, and 17. And the 17 year old was up at uh, uh, University of Texas at Austin this weekend uh, doing a campus tour. She went up there personally after the email Friday and said uh, um, they were going to hold it virtually because of the new Omicron. Uh, but she decided to go anyway. Um, and uh, she'd take the virtual tour from the parking lot but she wanted to see the campus. Um, uh, she's got an offer from a couple of other schools um, for scholarships too. But here's the one that I have, uh, I have um, tracked in here that's, um, that's hedged. And um, uh, it's important only uh, because I want you to be thinking about uh, hedging your positions. Now, here's another Canadian solar um, was a big trader for me. Um, and I didn't take any shorts in this one, but uh, but I had a short signal 
and I've been too busy doing other things. But uh, you can see, um, if I look at uh, the way uh, Chris has this organized, I can look over here and see that uh, uh, Apple is eight and two for four percent um, uh, in the next month, and seven uh, percent, uh, seventy percent of the time uh, for the next two months. And the expected move. Uh, let's look at CSIQ. Expected move on uh, CSIQ is five points, and that's good. Um, but if I go back over here and I select, um, where did my apple go? My apple went right here. All I have to do is do my control find, and then I can do my expected move. And yeah. uh, there's a uh, 21 points for 13 percent. Um, and, uh, let's see what, uh, the trend following says about it. It says hold long. That's back on 1119. But if I go to trend following for my most, well, uh, wait a minute. I got another trend following in here. That was, uh, I moved it off. I bet. Yeah, I bet I did. So let's, uh, let's go back to templates and I'm going to do, I, I really found this, uh, useful. Um, where did I put it? Dag on it. I wish I could, uh, Hmm. Oh, so I you didn't it. put it in your, in your favorites. Is that right? So it should yeah. be. Okay. But it's anyway, um, the most important thing is to, you can check it out here too and see that it's um, um, it's a hold long back there in uh, uh, November. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, everything, a lot of things were on 11.22, but subsequent to the 11.22 and the Hindenburg, um, you know they they went uh, they went kind of haywire. Let's mm -hmm. look at uh, there's the guppy. Okay, now this was a recent run, um, and uh, let me hook this one up. Doot. Doot. B B B Y. There you go. So BBY is a good uh, retailer, but it's also a consumer products. Um, uh, BlackRock is, a, is one of my favorites and it should be coming off the bottom. Uh, I wanna look at uh, BKNG. Hmm. Chris, would you, um, would you monitor um, the chat windows? And yeah. if everybody, uh, yeah, I'm, Ian. Ian, yeah, we answered that one for Ian, and then I'm looking. There's no other messages yet. So okay, okay. I'll well, let I'll, you know. I'll open it up to uh, uh, Bristol Myers. I uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Bristol Myers, and I'm also a big fan of uh, Abbott. I'm sporting a. Um, <laughs> I'm. <laughs> Are you going to I'm, talk about? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sporting a very, very expensive uh, uh, vest ornament uh, <laughs> from Abbott Labs. They bought uh, Saint Jude, and I have a Saint Jude pacemaker. <laughs> so i I've been I've been watching them lately. Any other questions? Yeah, um, Pruffle, uh, interested in your thoughts on Netflix? I think. Okay, Netflix. Oh yeah, Netflix. Boy, did they <laughs> they screwed the pooch. <laughs> yeah. Um they uh <clears throat> they really blew their earnings. Look at that. They've lost a lot of subscribers too. Um but if I uh if I go back over here and I put my uh, let me take this off. That way it'll stay put. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, one of the things that I really like about this, uh, this particular uh, chart, um, everyone, is uh, if you look here, that's uh, my friend from Germany calling. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's an old investment partner. Um, um, if you look here, this is the very, very short term volatility. Okay. Um, if you look here, this is uh, the, the, uh, the 30, 45, and uh, 60. And then the next one down is uh, the 90 day. And I just call them my, my 30, 60, 90 day um, uh, volatility indicators. And uh, I think it's really cool to have them uh, to be able to look out over time what, um, uh, what the expected move is on some of these stocks. Um, if you go back to uh, expected move, Netflix has got a 60, 64 point move um, that, that they expect on the upside and a 55% move, uh, to the downside. Well, it's already exceeded, um, the, um, the expected move cone, um, by a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you want to forecast the future. Look at toll brothers. Okay. Look at, look at the long-term uh, volatility on toll brothers. Um, it just went through a squeeze and that's what, that's what caused this sell down right here. There's a lower high. There's the high that was put in outside the, uh, uh, expected move, um, area and back to the mean. Okay. 20 moving average, which is my green line, um, uh, is, is the mean of pricing over the last month, 20 days. Okay. And it failed here. And you can see that volatility was rising on the short term, really spiked on the long term. And it has yet again, uh, spiked on 120 day. So I would say that based on volatility, uh, you're looking at, let's go to, IYR. Um, look at look at how high the volatility is in IYR. I would say that um, the housing market is looking for a little trouble um, this year. Now that's that's only four months out, but um, uh, and you can see by the uh, advanced decline line down here too that in its stock. Uh, that stock is really moving down. Okay. Uh, MDY. Okay. This is where, uh, if the market doesn't get its stuff together, uh, it has to start in the IWM and the MDY. IWM is, uh, is really where it's gonna, uh, it's gonna be the proof in the pudding. If it, if it can't uh, turn here, you see the volatility is turning down, and that's um, that's a good sign. And it came out of it came out of a squeeze also uh, to the downside. So keep your keep your eyes on um, on the small caps and the mid caps, and that takes me to um, I, I need to export um, my um watch list to um uh over here to um these are my markets okay um and if i these are the mon these are the ones that i monitor nearly every day uh if i don't do anything else i may not touch my portfolios or uh can you see this this is the guppy yeah, and, we can uh, see that. Okay, this is the small cap um, short, um, and you can see it's it's coming down. Um, and stochastics has reached the top. MACD hasn't turned over yet, but here's uh, 
Uh, here's TWM, that's another short. And you can see we're coming out of it. Now, I have started to put, uh, there's natural gas. Um, I think I think bonds are just going to get annihilated. If, they, if bonds keep going up, they're going to be fighting the Fed, you know, and that's that's a losing battle. OK, energy uh, probably has peaked out. There's our short queues. Um, I just I just came out of QID and SQQ. And um, uh, here's a 30 year bond. Uh, the VXX I came out of gold. I haven't touched for a while. And let me let me go back and show you why. OK. Uh, if I showed you a chart of GC, which is the gold future, um, you know, there was there was a buy signal back here in, in April, but it topped out uh, here in June. And it's just going sideways. This is a great place for you options players to play um, both sides with an iron condor. I just haven't wanted to bother with it. Okay. Um, it shows up on my, uh, on my, uh, channel, uh, that was diamonds. Here's junk bonds. Bye-bye junk bonds. Oh, here's all my, uh, uh, here's all my notes for the last month on, uh, on this. I think I showed you this before. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's. And here's uh, here's your 20 year. Here's your real estate. Okay, VTI. If you guys don't look at anything else, look at VTI because that is the total market ETF. That is a combination of all the stocks. Uh, I think there's over 8,000 of them and that's what it tracks. Okay, and you can see that we put in a nice tidy bottom. There's our There's our low on 124 and then it's just been sitting there retesting it and then we got a nice bullish signal on uh on friday now i would like um i would like to think that at this point we can go back up here to the 50 and retest it before it comes off again and it should come off this is at um uh 222 um and the 50 is up here in the middle of the river and let's call that uh, 230. So it could go up eight points and uh, it should come down. It should come down somewhere between two and four and then take off again. Um, but that's going to that's going to depend on uh, Chairman Mao, uh, Chairman Powell. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> Same thing with the cues. OK, we're going to. We're going to move from 350 to uh, 370, 380, back up to the middle of the river, and then uh, come back and retest it probably. Okay, same thing with uh, the mid caps. Silver, it's just there so I can watch what it's doing, and it's not doing anything. Um, you know, you would think with all the electronics, um, and solar power and everything else that they want all these exotic metals for that silver and gold would have gone through the roof, but uh, it hasn't. And you go look at lithium. I'll give you guys some homework assignments. Go look at lithium and and uh, all of that. Okay, here's uh, here's the text broken out. Okay, and I I apologize. I I meant to get this done so we could we could look at all of this on. Um, uh, Edge Raider, Chris. Yeah, uh, I just need to uh, export the watch list and then import it. Mm -hmm. And thanks for making that uh, available. Mm -hmm. um, I actually bought uh, QLD for the portfolios here. Uh, when I say for the portfolios, I took a twenty-five percent uh, position of the total position um, uh, in nine nine different portfolios besides the grandkids um i didn't put in the grandkids yet but what i what i try and do in the grandkids um is the same thing i do in in uh, one of my trust accounts i just use tqq because i want the triple and then what i do and there you go um 
I use TQQ uh, because it's like jet fuel. Um, and I'm not sure if the big eight or big 10, um, you know, uh, the FANG stocks, Apple, Amazon, Google, Netflix, NVIDIA, Microsoft, uh, there's 10 of them. Um, I'm not sure whether they're, they're still going to be viable candidates. And we'll go look at those uh, if you want. Now, here's UWM, and this is the Russell Double. Uh, I like it a lot. And I use the TZA and the TNA. TZA is a tri triple Russell. And um, uh, TNA, TNA is long and TZA is short. So anyway. A um, couple of questions in the, in the chat. Yep. I don't know if you can see that. Let's go look and see. What do we got here? FCX. Okay. We'll do a control F. Now, what I do is, um, and here it is, and uh, uh, that's expected move for the next 30 days. And we have, we're moving higher six points, which is 18%. And um, uh, I would think that, uh, let's take a look and see what, uh, uh, oh, we got an exit long on uh, VXX, uh, that's the long, long term though. Okay, so there's nothing going on in the short term. Now let's go back to um, uh, FCX, uh, no squeeze going on. And uh, FCX, um, I wanna look at, I wanna look at this. Okay, seasonally for SCX. It's a 50-50 shot at getting 8% for the next month, 5% for 60-40 uh, chance. Um, but um, down here um, with, uh, look at volatility decreasing. Um, I would say it's probably a good time, good time to buy. Let me look at uh, something here. I wanna look at, uh, you guys can't see what I'm doing here, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at a weekly, a daily, and a 30-minute. We've had two weeks of down move for it. Oh. <clears throat> uh. Okay. Yeah, it... Um, it didn't, it didn't make a squeeze. Let me put the squeeze, the squeeze chart on here. Nope, I gotta get, uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. there it is. Okay, <clears throat> so it actually uh, squeezed up, um, did not really trigger a squeeze coming down. But I would certainly expect that um, since it's retested the bottom, if um, if uh, the market holds together here, um, uh, you could take a you could probably take a nibble at it. But uh, uh, let's look at uh, ADM too. I like on uh, FCX. No, on FCX, I'd rather um, I'd rather trade uh, hmm. it's not in there either. Okay, I was looking at uh, at steel, um, but new. There's a there's one that's hit my list a couple of times. And I just not done anything with it. It's not in there. ADM is in the database. It's just um, I it's don't know what probably, you ran that report on. Yeah, uh, it's probably. Um, yeah, let me see where new isn't even in there. See, well, PXX looks like FCX. The, report, the reports you're looking at are for the CBOE weeklies. So yeah, um, so then it's a question yeah. of. Yeah, do they have weekly options? 
yeah, well, what I'll have to do is uh, I'll go back over here to, um, yeah, I usually, I usually try and do this at the end of the week to, um, so I can refresh everything. Yeah. Um, that way it all shows up, but I love, um, I love the ability to narrow it down to, to the things that have the options. Now, what I, what I really wanted to show, um, was, um, you get over here into, uh, where do, 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 do. It's not there. Hmm. Okay, I'll go back over here and I will. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's down at the bottom because I haven't moved it up yet. Which one are you Option. looking for? I'm looking for options um, date. The um, Oh, the... Um the new the performance. one. The, oh, the, the new one, yeah. Yeah, performance between dates. Yeah. You're probably, yeah, you might have to go to the category there. Um, what is scroll, it? Uh, if you scroll up the category list, you'll find it. It's under options analysis, or you have to scroll down on your list. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let's just see where you What's new, got maybe? No. no, no, it will be under, keep going down. And now go, now go up and we'll see on your way up as you scroll there up. There it is. There you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> now it runs it on what's really cool. And, <clears throat> and one of the reasons why I started uh, splitting all these things out was, uh, okay, now that's Apple. Okay. So let's go over here and look at, See if we can find new. Okay. Now I'm going to go to. Why isn't it in there? Well, because it's not. It's actually it came up as a floating window. So if you want to attach that window back to the main window, then it will appear in there. So if you can find it on your computer, it's a separate window right now. There it is. And just drag it into the into the documents again. It should read it should redock when you drag it down there. Yeah. You'll have to select the reports viewer. Yeah. Okay. So I'll take this, go to reports. Yeah. That's it. And, and then, then drag, drag that. it, drag it oh. back in. Yeah. And then it'll dock it. Okay. Come on. Where are you? And grab hold of the, of the title bar. And then as you drag it in, you'll yeah. find some handles will appear that you can yeah, too. I uh, I discovered I discovered that the other day, and I got them all. Um, I've got them all over all my screens because I love the, the <laughs> ability to yeah to move them around. That's not well. The the thing that happens is if you split one out and put it on a separate screen, the next yeah. time you run a report. It will yeah. put it where the last one was, and so, okay. and so it might be detached. Okay, so now I do this, and I uh, do this. There we okay. go. Now I can drag, drag it yeah, in there. Drag it yeah. up there. Yeah, there we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was so fascinated with. Um, uh, being able to, to look at my top left and have seasonality by month, monthly squeeze, weekly squeeze, IV and HV ranks and all of that, um, that I had these parked everywhere else on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there any way that uh, we can help with buy and sell signals on TQQ? Yeah, there is. Um, but let me, uh, let me finish up with my, my thought here first. Okay, so here's our apple, and I wanted to show you how cool this is. Okay, so the last, oops, not that one. 
this one here. Um, if I do this, the last move in Apple, um, was a 17% move, as you can see from here, okay? Um, and one of the things that um, I wanted to talk about is the, the fact that when you buy a 10 delta option, um, it's so cheap that you're gonna get a, a hell of a return um, on, that, on that cheap option but you got to be careful not to go too cheap. So try and stay, you know, 30 or 40. You still get a thousand percent if you look here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, it's, it's wonderful to get, you know, over 2000% uh, move in Apple uh, between uh, November uh, 12th and, and December 13th. And that was just picked from here to here. Okay. Yeah, Dave, a little trick for you. If you turn on the annotations on the chart. Yeah. Yeah. That then, shows it. Yeah, it yeah. shows your dates there, entry and exit. If you scroll to the right, there you go. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> if you uh, wanted to know what would work um, for uh, a put on Apple, you do the same thing. Conversely, you just drop it down to here and say, okay, um, now you look at your negative deltas, and uh, you know if you if you uh, if you sold a ten delta uh, negative ten delta, you had a five hundred percent return. But you know I'll take a three hundred percent return to know that I'll I'll have less extrinsic value and more intrinsic value. In the case of a forty delta, you still don't have much in the way of intrinsic, but it's still better than uh, just throwing it away. Now, um, somebody asked about TQQ. Before you uh, do that, Dave, um, what, yeah. just a very interesting, the very last bar, if you draw a line from Thursday to Friday, see what that move was in terms of the options. Okay. Uh, uh, take your yeah, line tool. i got to take my line tool first. I know. I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still learning too. Okay. So the option on that one, if you'd have, um, if you'd have taken uh, 20 delta is 150 percent, a 40 delta is 180. So you can see that even the 50, the 50 would have been a good one at 162 percent. Okay. And the 10 delta lost money, right? Right. Yeah. So so be aware that you can you can buy 10 cent options, but if you if you buy a 50 cent option. Uh, you're going to have more in the money probability. And that's what I'm all about is statistical probabilities. Now, <clears throat> um, here's your dates to expiration. If you're looking at, at uh, Apple for um, a short-term investment, you can go with your weeklies and do a three-week option, okay? And Friday would have been the day to buy a three-week option probably. Um, and if you bought... Uh, if you'd have bought a, uh, a 30 or a 40, you got a 98 and an 88. So a 90% chance uh, over the next 30 days um, to double your money, right? Well, that, so, it, so if you're looking at a 22 day to expiration, now that those figures are from Thursday to Friday. So if on Thursday you bought a 22 day to expiration. Right. Um, let's see. It would but, have gone up 90%. Or, yeah, yeah, just in one day. Yeah, just yeah. on that big move that happened on Friday. Exactly. But you're staying within um, normal delta parameters too. Uh, see, I, I like to buy them at um, uh, 40 or 50. If I'm going to do a back ratio spread, I'm going to buy a 70 and sell a 50. Uh, I'm going to buy, if I'm going to do a, a ratio, I'm going to buy two 70s and sell 50. Um, and I probably will go out um, uh, 90 days. So I'd have, I'd have probably gone uh, in April. So let's look out. Let's look out here. Um, April, let's call it 77 days. Um, and if I wanted to buy a, 
if I wanted to buy a 70 delta, okay, it's going to go up 40%. And um, the uh, uh, selling the 50 would have gone down 53%, but it's going down um, at uh, uh, a higher rate of theta. Um, so mm -hmm. that's where that's where you're gonna make uh, that's where you're gonna make your your uh, alpha. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah. you're, if you if you want to put it in those terms, but yeah. um, certainly right now, if you're uh, into option strategies, now is a good time to put a little money in um, uh, some of the names you like. Uh, uh, like uh, Freeport, um, in a uh, in a uh, ratio backspread, and a reason for reason. My reasoning for using a seventy fifty is because you the uh, selling the fifty, um, uh, you wind up with about a ninety percent um, uh, delta and uh, almost zero theta. And that's what you're looking to eliminate mm -hmm. by selling that one. Mm. Okay. Um, and by the way, um, uh, you know, I've been using back ratio spreads for years, um, but um, um, I've, I've seen and heard that uh, it's been refined into um, uh, zero uh, theta uh, back spread. Uh, what do they call it? Oh, they call it a zebra, a zebra back, back spread. And what that is, is a uh, zero ratio back spread. Uh, and you can do it with calls or puts. So theoretically, when we got up here to the top of Apple um, on uh, January the 4th, you could have bought a 70 Delta put uh, you could have bought two of those and sold the 50 and, um, uh, and then closed them out when you got down here. Uh, and, uh, you would have, you would have reaped the benefit of 90%. Let's see from 182 to, uh, let's give it the benefit of closing it the next day, 92 to 60, 32 points, 90% of 32 points would have given you, uh, 27 points on on uh, on two contracts if you just did a two to one um you know that's still uh, uh, a few hundred bucks you know mm -hmm. and and not very much in commissions yeah so three trades for, yeah exactly um, and no theta you, you say yeah. yeah so that's great so you're you're um you're selling what you're doing is you're selling Apple twice um, at 180 and buying it back at 160, 100, I'm sorry, 190 and buying it back at 160. And you had uh, very low cost in it. Mm -hmm. So that'll give you, that'll give you some, some ideas that you can do uh, going the other way too. So if you wanted to do that with, uh, uh, with the market, let's use, um, IWM. Let's see what we get there. If we'd have done IWM and one of the reasons why I like, uh, I'm going to do it to here. Now I'm going to do it to my, uh, January 24th reversal. Okay. So that updated it. And that's so cool. Uh, Chris, it's just, really neat that we're able to just stretch a line from here to here and uh and make it all visual and then we can look at uh the negative puts and if i'd have done a 70 okay uh for 22 days that would have given us 330 and um uh 488 on the uh on the 50 delta um, and you're doing one, uh, two to one. So you're doing 660 to 488. You still get, you're getting 160% return 
on your investment um, and protecting a, a portfolio of small caps. Mm -hmm. How's that? Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> I used um, IWM there. What if we did uh, as uh, uh, one of the, uh, oops, T Q Q Q. I didn't have my find activated. So there's T Q Q. So on January the 5th, if we were to, there's your buy signal right there. Okay. I'm going to use this bar right here. That's your buy signal. There's your low. There's your test of your low. There's the second test of your low. That bar closed higher than the previous bar. Now, your buy signal would come in when it closes above this high right here, which would be three bars ago. Your buy signal is 5905. Okay. And it's currently trading at um, my eyes are bad, 56 and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's, uh, okay. We did an entry. There. Yeah. Now okay. the reason it's not showing in the chart is, is that would be to do with it not having a lot of trading, a lot of them. options. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. it's one of those illiquid type yeah. of things. Yeah. yeah. You, you could have done it with, uh, with these guys, <laughs> <laughs> but once again, uh, you'd have, you'd have made some money, but not on a, what if, you know, so let's go back and look at, um, for me, I'll probably set up, uh, with some confirmation this week. Let's do this again. And I'll look for uh, a buy signal which this would be the buy signal for this last rally up to here. And the sell point would have been here. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's your uh, 40 Delta 50 Delta. And you can see your percentage of return on a 29 day option uh, drops. Um, because of uh, the investment. If you stay at 10% or a, a 10 delta, um, yes, you're, you're buying cheap options. But uh, uh, it would be interesting, Chris, if we could do this same thing and specify um, the number of positions that we take um, in a spread. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> this last one took you a year and a half to complete. <laughs> what would that one take? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, actually so, getting the, the data online was the big was the big thing. And so now that data is available. Um, it's mm -hmm. not it's not as gonna it, it's not gonna take as long as a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have plans for for uh, making this, you know, making it more. I'm doing doing things like you're suggesting. I do have I do have plans for that. So I'll bet you you do. You've got I don't know where you come up with your ideas, but you've got some excellent ones. And I'm sorry that George isn't here to throw some zingers at you too. Um, mm. You know. Yeah. So I'll bet you he kept you busy too. Um. Yeah. Uh, can it help with buy and sell signals? Uh, let's go look at. Um, uh, VXN trend fall. I didn't run this one on there, but uh, let's go to uh, reports. Uh, da -da -da -da. I got to go back to my favorites. And uh, oh, what's oh, I see. All right, so. 
I'm getting too many favorites. I'm just, <laughs> what I need is. It seems that you have more favorites. <laughs> it's almost like you've got every single template in your favorites now. Well, I, I as I'm going by them, I'm going, geez, I didn't run RSI power this week. And uh, <laughs> uh, power zones, that is. Let's see, VXX. I added it recently. I just added guppies. Where's my VXX? Okay. I need to sort by name, Chris. <laughs> yeah, that should help. It's not there. It's not. Okay. So I got to go down to the trading template. Uh, VXX. I know where that one's at. Okay. Signals. It's supposed to be in my favorites, eh? Yeah. So I suspect it's actually just called signals and not VXX. That, that's probably yeah. the problem with that. That's probably what happened. Yeah. Okay. So now let's do a find on uh, TXX. Oh, I didn't activate that. So let's do a find a TQQ. And exit your short. Okay. Now, uh, can we go back um, to uh, let me go back to VXN trend on eleven twenty two, and it's telling you to exit your long. So, can you get your signals from TQQ? On TQQ with this, absolutely. Your short terms are saying uh, exit the longs. Your intermediate terms are saying hold the longs, okay? And I can't tell you in between because I don't know. But let's see for, uh, okay, just a couple of days before that, it was hold your long. So can, can Edge Raider uh, tell you when to buy and sell TQQ? Absolutely. Okay, because now um, uh, we'd have to we'd have to pick a date someplace in between to find out where it said uh, take it short. But you can see it tells you very definitely on the short term to exit your shorts. So um, now I'm going to go to IWM. That would also mean that um, uh, you can, uh, where did my chart go? Oh, I don't have a chart for this, so I have to go over here and get, uh, um, uh, you could use your IWM as a signal also because your IWM, TQQ, and SQQ. So you could do the opposites. Um, right now, you should um, exit your SQQ and uh, get ready to do a, a long TQQ, if you follow me. Uh, who can you see your messages? Recording is on. Uh, I don't know. I think the only messages are are me and Chris, hosts and panelists. Yeah, I'm not seeing what you're looking at there. Yeah, okay. I think we've we've got everything. Um, there was a question that you missed. Okay. Because it came in the middle. Um, <clears throat> and it's from Joel, and and uh, the question is: Do you ever use bond funds like TLT to hedge? Yes. And do you think VXX is better for hedging? I do think VXX is better for hedging because it's directly correlated to the VIX. Um, I have been steering away from TLT um, and um, other bond funds, uh, IEF and a few others, um, because I think they're well, well, well overinflated.
Uh, I see a message about uh, TLT. Yes, my times are central time. It is full screen in edge reader. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you've got. I think you've got all of those questions. Okay. For sure. Uh, okay, and IWM uh, on eleven twenty two was hold your short and enter a short, and then. Um, later on now it's hold short all the way through and that's uh, uh through yesterday okay so it would remain to be seen what uh what uh yeah and look at uh look at the big river uh we got across we got across the big river to get into the traders traders camp here um on the guppies and uh expected move on the iwm for the next 30 days is 21 points it's actually 20 points either way um but i suspect that we'll see this change um soon now if i go back to uh, seasonality on IWM for the next two months, it's got uh, it's got two percent for one month and zero for two months and two percent for three months, and that's all seventy percent probability. Seven out of ten and eight out of ten, um, and IV rank on IWM is. Uh, it's in bucket number one, but its IV rank is 97, and and uh, and its uh, IV is 36. So, um, I I really like having all of these all of these available to me, and I have Chris. I've split them out into separate screens, and I can show. Let's see if I can. Uh, let me move this. Oops, what did I do? David, what did you do? I'm going to take this one. Okay. And uh, oh, there I am. I don't know. Can, can anybody see me on camera? No. Huh. Okay. You might well. have to, if you wanted to do that, you might have to. Yeah, I can see on Zoom that your camera is crossed out, so you'd have to enable that somehow. Do, 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 do. And uh, while you're doing that, Shash, Shashi has a, had a question about Hindenburg. Mm -hmm. um, and he is running it on the S&P 500, but it's not supposed to be run on the S&P 500. Um, there's a special list for Hindenburg. It's called yeah. the uh, Hindenburg list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why, that's why he's not seeing the uh, signals you are okay um i am looking for there it is i moved it now i gotta make it smaller to make it fit and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change screens to what what i'm looking at so that you guys understand what the heck i'm talking about Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna change screens to this one, and I share that one. Did you guys see a screen change? Yeah, there is a screen with mm, mm, quite a few windows. One, two, three, four, five, six windows. Yeah. Okay, and this is. Uh, There's a performance between dates. And then here is the, here's the numbers I was looking at. Okay, and I can actually just make this bigger and then smaller again. Okay, yep. here's my performance between dates. Okay, and uh, this was on uh, TQQ. Yeah. Okay, but what I've done, 
to make myself a little more productive is um, there's my seasonality by month and a monthly squeeze, weekly squeeze, seasonality now. And seasonality now is really um, given to me if I change uh, to my main screen. And I want to change this back to uh, this screen, screen one. Okay. Can you guys, uh, can you guys see the new screen? Yes. Okay. And then this is the one, this is the one I look at most of the time. Now this gives me, this gives me uh, the eight and the uh, 20 moving averages. And it tells me which ones have crossed over down, uh, which ones have crossed over up. But it also gives me um, uh, outside of this chart, um, the uh, what's happening over the next uh, three months. And if I see one that tickles my fancy, like solo, um, this is how I found Sava for my, for my granddaughter. She was in a uh, competition. Um, she didn't win by the way, some, some group out of, out of Seattle won her, her group here in Texas, um, uh, scored, uh, about two thirds of the way in the middle of the pack. So, so you're talking to somebody that's just kind of a two thirds in the middle of the pack kind of guy, <laughs> <laughs> but, but they have, they have all the big wizards up there in, uh, in Seattle selecting stocks. But, um, anyway, um, Sava is one that came through here with a, a huge, um, percent gain and her contest was back in October that was September and October and I don't even know what Saba is I've never traded it um, no well the chart's not showing either so I think yeah. you want to press the what you want to do go to the bottom right and press the neg the minus uh, yeah because it's there you go press that there you go there we go okay that's what I got I just got too much real estate there right yeah okay so <clears throat> we were big winners in the contest, but uh, one of Sa Sava was took us out. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, pins. You know, here's all these all these meme stocks that that uh, people are trading. Yeah. Jane Jane Nug. I thought with this down this downturn, um, I thought sure we were going to get. Uh, get some gold action and we didn't, we didn't get gold or silver either one. Um, you know, there was still everybody scrambling, trying to get rid of all their, their big caps, their big 10. Um, so anyway, um, the way I run, <clears throat> the way I run my charts, my uh, edge rater is I, I look at the, the handy first to see where we're at. And you can see we had, uh, we had the handy, in July, I already told you about uh, November, and then uh, you know when we're um, when we're looking at moving off, uh, moving average crossover with uh, up upcoming probability, um, I uh, I think that you know at at this moment in time we need to be looking at very short term, but um, if we crank back the date to um, November, you know, we would have, we should have been looking at the other side of the chart for, for, uh, November, December, and January, um, knowing that Hindenburg was looming. And so I wasn't really looking for shorts, but, um, uh, I did get busy based on Hindenburg, um, and, uh, a bunch of other stuff that I use, um, which is quite interesting. Someday I might share it, but um, uh, the uh, the the recent ten percent swing that we've had in price in the S and P 
um, was uh, preceded by some IWM selling. And then uh, the S and P hit, and then the the uh, mega caps, the all the uh, uh, big boys like uh, Google and Amazon and Microsoft and and Apple, uh, all the uh, uh, trillion dollar companies, you know. Uh, and you know when you take ten percent out of a trillion dollars, that's a hundred billion dollars. That um, that uh, came out of people's pockets someplace because a lot of people had been spending that money. Um, uh, and that's, that's something else that I wanted to talk about too, is, is um, long-term portfolios. Um, yeah. So I just spent a hundred grand on, on, um, on a long-term portfolio for grandkids. Um, but I don't think this is the, the real buying opportunity that we're going to have uh, this year. I think we're going to have a, a, a tough year and maybe it'll be like 2018 where it, it, uh, it range trades uh, in a downward slope. Um, and maybe, uh, maybe it'll crash, but um, you know, with the fed working um, to raise rates with inflation um, running rampant and uh, maybe it's, tempering itself a little bit, but, uh, with, uh, with Omicron, uh, the, the, the American world anyway, is trying to reopen regardless of whether, um, uh, whether it's a, a real good idea or not. But, um, um, uh, my grandkids have all had it. They, two weeks ago, um, they just started back to back to school. Um, this past week after being out for two weeks with varying degrees of suffering from, um, from COVID. Yeah. And fortunately all of them, but the five-year-old had been vaccinated and the 17 year old had been boosted. Um, but uh, uh, my daughter uh, who's 41 uh, and a teacher um, got it. And uh, my five-year-old grandson has not had it. Uh, hmm. If he has had it, it's been an extremely mild uh, cold and cough that he presented with a couple of weeks ago. So be careful with your children and your grandchildren. Hmm. But uh, I, um, uh, I've really enjoyed um, uh, working with edge reader and working with Chris and, and seeing all this stuff happen, um, especially with these new templates, this, this new one is just terrific. Mm, thanks. I really, I really like it. Um, and, and it shows me that, uh, can you see this option perform performance yeah. between dates again? Okay. Mm -hmm. It really shows me if you do, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a triple, um, ETF, or if it's, uh, just a standard, uh, Apple, um, that your best, um, your best performance is, um, is generally in, um, in the 40 and 50, uh, range. Um, no, I didn't do it. I forgot. Dang it. Now I got to find you again. Where are mm -hmm. you? There we go. Okay. Um, I don't want that. I want Apple. And now I want to do a click. And wait a minute. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Click in the row. Click, click another cell in that row. So it might uh, in the same row as Apple. So the one, oh, yeah, click there. Yeah, uh, that's weird, oh, isn't it? That's weird. Okay. Well, oh, that's why. Oh, uh, that's why. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now let's find let's find Apple. Yeah. And uh, there we got Apple. And let's move it over here. And take this. This is this is really, really very innovative. I never would have thought of doing this, but I, <clears throat> I want to I want to make sure that whatever I do. 
I do correctly um, and, uh, and correct some of my mistakes because I've never been able to go back over history and see. Now, I know that a 10 delta is cheap, and I know that a 50 delta is more expensive. So my return on investment is going to be less. But if I can pick up, uh, if I know, for instance, in my, uh, uh, my Apple uh, seasonality by month, um, I'm going to have a 70% chance uh, over the next 30 days to pick up 3%. 3% is, uh, is a big enough move that I'll, uh, I'll buy some options in it. And from now on, instead of buying a 50, which is what I traditionally do, uh, I'm going to take a leap and, and go to 30. Mm -hmm. uh, the 30 Delta gives you a 739% return over 66 days. Um, and uh, uh, if, if I... Um, if I was just to pick a, well, I got to pick a crossover date here. No, nope, not yeah. that one. I got to do my trend line. Oop, this one, trend line, crossover date, because this is where I would buy it. And and I'm telling you, kids, this one really works. I just do that to the exit. And now I can do this. And that gives me an apple from 11.15 to 1.6. So that's almost perfect exit. And if I bought a, a 50 call, um, it would have given 288. If I'd have bought a 30, it would have been a 421. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I sell 20 deltas. And you know why I sell 20 deltas? Standard deviation. Standard deviation is a 16 delta. Hmm. So if you yeah. Uh, 16 Delta gives you um, generally a 32% chance going up uh, or 34% chance going up and a 34% chance going down. That's a 68% chance that that mm -hmm. stock is going to fall in that area in 30 days. And um, if you go, uh, uh, if you want to go to, to 95% and sell uh, 95 percenters, then that's where you got to drop down to, uh, to 5%. And that gives you uh, a five Delta, a five Delta gives you a 95% chance of, uh, uh, a two standard deviation move, never touching your position. So if you want to do like, um, uh, uh, some of the, some of the big hedge funds do and, uh, and sell naked puts, uh, in an up market, you sell them at the five percent, and uh, and you roll them and roll them and roll them and roll them. Uh, you roll them to the next five percent, the next five percent, the next five percent every thirty days. And mm -hmm. I, I would say that um, my my personal experience has been, um, uh, you you do a thirty day option, and you close it in twenty one days, and and put on another thirty day option and close it in 21 days or 50%. So take 50% of your profit and roll it. Take 50% off and roll the balance. 50% off and roll the balance. And when it's all gone, you just start all over again. And there goes uh, laddering. You can ladder your, uh, uh, ladder your bonds or ladder your options just like you ladder bonds. And you can ladder them out um, 90 days at a time. And you do a 30-day uh, 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 call option, uh, uh, call spread, and you roll it to uh, a 60-day. And then you do another, you do a 90-day. And every time it drops down to a 30 days till expiration, you roll it out uh, again to 90 days. And, and then... Uh, when that one gets down to 30 days, you roll, uh, roll it out to a new 90 day and you can, you can roll your options forever like that, especially with, with, um, uh, like a bull market, like we've seen, but, um, uh, 
it's it's more work than I want to do at 72 years old. <laughs> uh, that's that's for all the young guns that are out there. Okay, um, I just got a thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. Dave, great way to analyze price, Hindenburg divergence to confirm head and shoulders, Guppy River, uh, huge move down, Bollinger Bands, right off the Bollinger Band, squeeze, exhaustion, six to nine days, ticks a thousand, a thousand. Yep, boy, I'll tell you what, you got the gist of it. And who was that? That was from that was Shashi. Shashi, yeah. Shashi, okay. Um, someone was paying attention. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing I'd like to say too, is, um, if your positions, um, get to, uh, three standard deviations out, um, and you can put a Keltner on, let me, um, let me see if I can, uh, insert indicator and then i want to bring this into uh, i'm going to show you something that's really kind of cool uh where's my k keltner channel okay and i want to change it to a three still going to be a 20 okay um we, we can't see whatever you're working on yeah i'll bring yeah. it into you just now okay can you see that yeah okay so what you have here is a 30 minute chart of the cues okay so here was our here was our monday bottom okay and our nice bounce this is 30 minutes okay it went up to one and a half uh atr that is that gray Keltner channel. Okay. You can see Bollinger band on the top, which is two standard deviations away from the 20. Okay. It dipped into there and, and almost made a crossover here. In fact, it did. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it gave you another bounce. Okay. But what I try and watch is because Bollinger bands are two standard deviations away from a 20 uh, moving average. Okay. They stretch and contract and stretch and contract. But you can see it's stretched, but this blue, and I should, I should make that uh, uh, format that, and I'm going to make it color. I'm going to make it gray. Okay. Upper band and lower band. I'm going to make it gray. Okay. That way it'll show differently. Okay. So now what this is, is three standard deviations. Okay. Now, three standard deviations back here was where you take your profits. And that was back on uh, 111 when we had a little bit of a rowdy rally. It rallied up to three standard deviations away stretch the Bollinger Bands, which are two standard deviations away from the 20, okay? And the three ATR, average true range, uh, over 20 days, okay, is this line here, okay? And you can see it's declining along with the 20, okay? And the Bollinger, it came inside, it came inside uh, the three trading range uh, uh average true range and then it came in here and gave you a bit of a squeeze pop okay and then came back up and it the price almost went to three atr right there okay and three atr would have been at that moment uh let's see upper band 353 and price was actually the high was 356. Okay. So it almost gave you a signal to exit your position. So watch your uh, average true range. Um, because once it gets to uh, 
three stand three average true range um uh movement it's overbought okay now this is a very short term chart too but you can see that down here bollinger band got squeezed in the middle of this uh, uh right here in the middle on uh, at 10:30 on Friday cool huh mm -hmm. so there's a little technical analysis lesson for you there's <laughs> if if your if your uh position gets to 3 average true range um it's time to to uh cut it back or let it let it come back because it's getting too far away from from the mean and that's all that any of this is all about because when you go here to here okay that's a uh, uh, linear regression channel and it's two standard deviations away and you can see that it lines right up right there we can't so. we can't see that chart <laughs> oh we're look, yeah we're looking at the uh, Oops. Options performance between dates. Yeah, sorry. Okay, there you go again. So this is a linear regression of the rally that's happened since Monday. Yeah, and it's just going it's going flat. Okay, so if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't come into if it goes into this, we're in trouble. If it goes into this, we're going to be okay. But I'm going to say anything down here is fair game for selling puts and put spreads and, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and your portfolio should be hedged with, uh, with uh, call spreads too. If you wanted to, if you wanted to buy or sell call spreads. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, I've okay. Uh, I've overstayed my welcome. <laughs> Holy cow! It's two and a half hours. You kidding me? <laughs> thanks for the summary, yeah. Sashi. <laughs> yeah, thank, thanks, Dave. That's wow. Yeah, so it's good. Um, I think I think you got through the questions really good. That's some fantastic information. I really appreciate the time you spent uh, doing that, Dave. Not Very a problem. Much appreciated. And oh, I know look. you're busy today with your grandkids and uh, family events. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry the camera wasn't on. You'd have seen my five year old in here <laughs> <laughs> checking out yeah. my Hot Wheels. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, have, a, have a great um, family gathering and okay. uh, we'll, we'll uh, catch up again pretty soon. Thank, thanks very much for having me. And I hope, uh, I hope this was a valuable uh, session for everyone. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Y'all take care and I'm going to sign off. Great. Thank you, Dave. You bet. Okay. Thank you, everybody. We're going to close down now. And the recording should be available um, tomorrow. Yeah, sometime tomorrow. I'll send a, a link out with that. Thanks again. And uh, see you next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.